It's really important to understand the effect of fire on the soil. And these effects ultimately vary depending on the heat and duration of the fire, but they include a loss of moisture, a loss of nutrients, a loss of organic matter, all that beautiful compost and age manure that you may well have worked through the soil can actually be burnt and have disappeared. It can include a loss of microbiology in the soil. Now anyone that's a good gardener knows that healthy soil is brimming with life. In fact, one teaspoon of healthy organic enriched veggie garden soil can have as many units of life as there are people on the planet and fire destroys those. And there can also be a loss of the seed bank depending on the heat. Now the good thing is that we can restore that. And for example, with that loss of microbiology, the bacteria, the mycorrhiza and the earthworms, they will come back, but we need to actively work to get them back. Now ash is quite alkaline and that will have an effect on the soil. If your natural soil is acidic, as it is in many areas of the Adelaide Hills or Kangaroo Island, it's probably not going to be an issue if there was only a little bit of ash left on the soil. For example, if it was a paddock and there was a bit of stubble and it burnt, that little bit of ash might even sweeten the soil and the grass might grow better. However, if there are large deposits of ash left on soil which is already alkaline, that can cause a problem. And you can get plants with signs of lime-induced chlorosis, which is where you get the yellowing leaves and the darker green veins. So ultimately it comes down to knowing the pH of your soil naturally, is it acid or alkaline, and knowing how much ash was deposited. Anything more than about a shovel full per square metre is too much, and it's worthwhile trying to remove it. The other thing about ash is that it's quite light and movable. So after a fire, if there's a wind, the ash can actually blow away and even take the top layer of soil with it. Ash also can end up in waterways. Now it's hydrophobic by nature, which means when we get a little shower of rain, the water doesn't actually penetrate the soil, but it can pick the ash up and wash it into waterways, whether it's dams or creeks or rivers. So that's why you'll often see the hay bale or the shade cloth erosion barriers, which are stopping the ash polluting the waterways. The effect of fire on clay soils is quite different. It makes them set rock hard like cement. You should also be aware of possible contaminants in areas that burnt, particularly if there were any structures. This could be plastic from irrigation pipe or even plastic netting that burnt. Or if there are any structures nearby, be aware of possible asbestos or permapine timber which burnt, which is treated with copper, chromium and arsenic. To find out how to deal with such contaminants, check out the Natural Resources website. So restoring soil after fire involves removing excessive quantities of ash if you have them. It's also about improving the soil structure with the addition of compost or aged animal manures. This will also start to feed the soil microbes and bring them back. You can also help those microbes along by using compost teas, soil probiotics and even seaweed based plant tonics which will help to stimulate those microbes and get them to increase. It's really important to cover the soil and not leave it bare. So use a layer of mulch or even sow a green manure crop if it's a veggie bed, even if you're not ready to plant yet. Any plant growth will help to bring that soil back to life. Now obviously one of the first plants to come back after fire is the weeds. Now while we don't want weeds that are going to self seed or cause a problem, and it might be a good opportunity to manage woody weeds, it's worthwhile remembering that any plant growth is better than no plant growth. So don't go spraying weeds if they're not causing a problem because they're a sign of the soil life coming back.